So, Army of One is released on DVD and on demand today. Shall we talk about it? Roll the titles. Hi guys, it is Mr. Scotty Pie and I am back for another video, another film review. This is for the new film that came out today, the 15th of December 2020, called Army of One. Just one, not two, one. Um, so before I do jump into my review of this film, if you do enjoy this video, please do hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, um, trailer reactions, movie reviews, general movie talk, and a weekly movie news that does sound like your sort of thing, why not hit that subscribe button? And of course, at any point, if you want to drop any comments and your thoughts on this film or this video, do drop it in the comments below. I do respond to all comments. So, Army of One. This is a new action thriller film which sees Brenna fighting off a family who are hell bent on killing her. This is a straight up action thriller. Uh, obviously, an independent film. Um, we've. Yes, yeah, so let's just talk about the opening scene, which shows some cops investigating a house and getting attacked by a group. One cop gets killed, another cop gets seriously injured. This scene, obviously being the opening scene, does not set the tone for the film. It sets a tone, but it's not one for this film. Um, by that I mean the rest of the film has a completely different feel to it. And this whole scene, this scene is a, you find out it's a flashback from um, Brenner's husband, who is dealing with the trauma of this, as it's been recent events of watching his partner die and him get seriously injured. This scene is only ever referenced again in the fact that um, we find that, remember the character's name, is Dylan. Um, the husband is called Dylan, and the only time you really see him Reference this again is the fact that he has a wound and he has to change his bandages. This scene, which is a badly filmed scene, the, the, the worst bit is the sound. The sound editor really got the ball in this scene because they were picking up every slight rustle of clothing, bit of leaves on the floor, and this volume of the voices was really loud, but other things were too quiet. So you automatically it puts you on the back foot of this film and then this scene doesn't even make sense for the rest of the film, it doesn't, it's not even needed. The opening scene, it should have been cut, it was pointless. It could have been, it didn't even need to be there. I would say it could have been just referencing there, just completely ignore what has ever happened. Take the bandages off him, it doesn't need to happen. It made no relevance to the film at all. At all. <sighs> This film does have quite a few moments that don't actually add anything to the plot. It has a few scenes where once all the dialogue's finished and everything they needed to get from the scene is done, the, it still links on the scene with nobody speaking, nobody doing anything. And all it does is make the viewer a bit uncomfortable. Um, it's, it was quite obviously there for padding. The film is an hour and 20 minutes long and it felt like they stretched it to make it an hour and 20 minutes long by doing these scenes where either the whole scene was pointless and didn't add anything to the film at all or nothing happened in the scene and you're just there lingering, looking at nothing, wondering why you're watching this scene. I'm wondering what significance a shot of two people listening to music after they finish talking for an extra minute or two has relevance to the film. I'll tell you now, none. It has no relevance. It was purely to pad the film out and extend its runtime. As an hour and twenty is obviously the shorter side of an average film. An average film would say is an hour and twenty to two hours, and anything after that is on the longer side. They stretched this to make this a like medium sized film rather than a short film, shorter film. But the problem with that 
again is, there were other scenes in this film where you feel like you'd missed out on information. You saw a character walking through the woods, you're like, why are they there? And what is going on? And these kind of scenes could have done me of uh, being a longer scene or um, an extra little scene thrown in to add some explanation. So it seems like they cut out some important information and important scenes to fill it with scenes where nothing happens. They cut out the wrong scenes and put in the right, the wrong, they cut out the wrong scenes and added wrong scenes. If that makes sense, I hope it does. Because it really does take away the film. You're there going, but who's that again? Or what's going on? I mean, there are some good moments in this film that I, I don't want to come out saying this is all bad. It's the film that you think you can guess the plot in within the first five minutes of the film. The plot, it twists, it turns, all the characters events, you think you can guess it all in the first five minutes. And this is mostly true. But there are some moments in this film that generally made me go, oh, I didn't expect that to happen. And I mean, those moments are about two or three times in the film. Um, and I actually had to think, oh, I wonder where we're going to go now, actually. Then you find out, as soon as I've done that, you jump straight back onto the, uh, they're just going to carry on and what I'd guessed in the first five minutes of the film, they're sticking with that track. But when you got the little surprises and the little, oh, I don't know what's going to happen now, it was really nice, it made you really stand up and go, oh, okay, maybe this is going to be something else. It's not, it's exactly what you think it is in the first five minutes. The star of the film, um, Ellen Holloman, who plays um, Brenner, um, does well to hold the film. She's a decent actor and submerges herself into the role. And I can see why she's always been cast as the action star, because she's good at that in this film, you can see it. I mean, she's in the Spartacus TV series. She's going to be in The Matrix 4. So that kind of shows that people have faith in her as holding a film as an action star. I don't think she's a star of Matrix 4, and she's definitely not the star in Spartacus. I do love that series, by the way. <laughs> but she shows she can hold her own as an action actor. Um, she does the action scenes really well. And she obviously knows what she's doing. But the only thing that lets this uh, character down is the script. Everything, she does everything right, the script doesn't. Which would be okay for her as the actor, and, and there only be bad points to the writer, if not for the fact that she's actually a credited writer. There's four credited writers and she's one of them. So, even though she, I respected her as an actor, she, I, I was like, oh, you've just been held up by the writing. Oh, you wrote it. Okay, then. Let's move on to um, Matt Passmore, who plays Brenner's husband, Dylan. He's one of the weaker points in the film. Not the weakest, but one of the weaker. He's not bad as an actor. He's just far from great. And even though he has been in bigger productions, such as Jigsaw, the Saw movie, and he was also in the Lethal Weapon series, he just feels like a good amateur actor. Someone you'd see in an independent film like this and go, he's not bad. But the fact when you see he's actually been in some bigger productions, you go, well, where's, well, where's what you have for that in this? Do you not care about this production or I've not seen Jigsaw or Leave a Weapon or is that what you're doing there as well? If so, maybe you need to sort of think a bit about the passion for it because it just seemed it was going through the motions a bit. We also have Gary Casper who plays Butch, who's the main protagonist of the film. I wouldn't say the main villain, but the main protagonist, the one who kind of sets everything up and the wheels in motion. I was generally shocked by his acting because he's been in things like Supergirl, who, which is obviously a major CW TV international show I'm a big fan of. And his acting is, I'd quite easily say, the worst in the film. It is horrendous. It's 
difficult to watch. Every scene is overacted. Some scenes he feels like he actually forgot the script and just making stuff up as he goes along. And for some reason, the editors kept it in. The director didn't stop him. And it's really like the improvisation. I'm assuming it got an improvisation. If that's what's in the script, then that's horrible. Um, but the improvisation is really bad and doesn't actually reduces the enjoyment of the scene and the film. It's really that bad. And the only point, and I'm saying like his acting was so bad, I almost laughed at times, but what did make me laugh was his tattoos. I saw his tattoos on the scene. He's got a big tribal tattoo and the tattoo says bad boy on his arm. It looks like someone had got a Sharpie about five minutes before the director called action and just drew it on and coloured in. And I said coloured in, I used the word coloured in loosely. There were obvious gaps in these, the colouring in. It's horrendous. I generally laughed out loud at the tattoos that, that, that he's displaying. It's really bad. But what's worse, the tattoos or his acting? Then we have Geraldine Singer, who played Mama. I was not shocked to see that she's been in so many productions. She's in Get Out, Mudbound, Green Book, 21 Jump Street, the later film, not the series. And you're not shocked to hear this because her acting is standout. It really is a standout of the film. Um, every time she's on scene, she commands the presence of the audience. She steals the scenes. And I'd like to say that she was a shining light in the film. But again, she was written badly. She had this chance to become this fantastic villain of the piece, really quite scary and eerie. And that's what they were going for, but missed so badly. The script really let her character down and really let her acting down because she was acting really well but the script just didn't give her that chance to take it to that next level which would have really made this film a standout in my opinion they let her down so let's talk about the writing then i've definitely done it let's talk about it properly it was bad it was really bad he felt like the writer's first attempt at writing his first ever film and then wrote the first draft and said, yeah, we'll go with that. Didn't think about doing rewrites, didn't do second drafts, third drafts, four drafts, like a normal match. It f I'm sure this is not what happened at all, especially because there were four writers. Four writers went, yeah, that's fine. Let's go with that. But yeah, it felt like an, a, a, a writer's first attempt and went, yeah, we'll run with the first draft. That looks fine to me. The lines were cliches. It would, all the lines were cliche, obvious and cheesy. Not all of them, but most of them. It was easy the weakest part of the film. It felt like they'd bullet pointed the plot points. This needs to happen, then this needs to happen, then this needs to happen and we end here. What they didn't write was what leads that to that and to that and to that. And that's the problem is that there's in between between the bullet points, between the plot points. They didn't know how to connect it, so they tried to do it in the quickest and easiest and sometimes stupidest and pathetic ways possible, in my opinion. Which meant they left off entire sections, which may have explained how a character was at one point in the next, or maybe some backstory or some character development. There was moments when you felt you were going to get some interesting backstory when they were sat down and they was talking to each other about who they were as people. You thought, fantastic, I can get some flesh out of these characters, some history, some background of their story. But then they replaced that conversation with some just pointless chat. And he was like, oh, I was really looking forward to finding out some dark secrets, some explanations, some... Because they had it, they started off, they gave the breadcrumbs of, oh, this is darker than and more twisted than you think it is, and then, nah, brush that away. Let's carry on some action. It's like, oh, you're like, yes, it's going, going somewhere. No, it's not. And it was such a letdown. It was really was. There was even a moment where they were, you could see they were desperately trying to go and look at his emotion. Oh, that was sad of it. Oh, it's a gut punch of sadness. And as a viewer, you're going, can we move on on board? 
I was genuinely bored for this scene. And they were trying to so much give you a good punch of emotion and you're watching it going, you done yet? Um, I'd want to watch more of the action. Because they didn't develop the characters. They didn't, I didn't care when someone died or when something happened to someone in the characters. I just didn't care. Any of them, not even the star of the film. I was like, if the, if the star of the film died in like the first 10 minutes of the film, I would have gone, okay, cool. And that's how I felt the whole film. And the very last scene in the film was written so bad. It was so bad. It was like, uh, this is going to happen now. Well, yeah, there it is. Oh, is that where you're going to do it? Really that simple. You could have made another good five, ten minute action scene out of this, but no, okay, that's fine. <sighs> yeah. So in conclusion, where this film really stood out and really, really shined well was the female cast. There was three major female cast members in this film. And they were all acting brilliantly, really fantastically in my opinion. The more female cast, none of them are bad at all, but the three main ones were the standouts. Obviously let down by the writing, but their acting abilities was fantastic. All the male actors were quite bad. Not, not all of them were dreadful, but most of them was. And um, the action, obviously this was, it was an action thriller. The action was good. It was probably the Apart from some of the standard acting, but where they're writing them down, the action was actually quite entertaining. But it looked like the budget didn't allow them to go as far as they wanted to go with it, which would have really enhanced the film. If you're going to go with an actual film, go all out of the action. But it looks like the budget didn't allow them to. And that's fine, because you know it's an independent film. But at the same time, you feel a bit let down, because you're like, oh yeah, it's going to be some cool like fight scenes and death scenes and that kind of stuff. You're like, oh, okay. That was alright, not the camera. And it, like, it was almost there, the action was almost there. So, this film is basically a film that you've seen a million times before. It, you've seen this entire story, I don't know how many times, the same storyline, um, characters, and general plot and everything. You've seen it before. And this film is, I'd say, charming at its core. But if someone asked me if they should watch this film, I'd recommend one of the other films. I'd say this film is it's okay, but if you're going to watch this film, watch this film instead. You'll get the exact same film, but better acting, better script, better action, better everything. And that's the truth. Um, so if I had to score this film, I think I'd give it, 3.5 to a 4 out of 10 and I think even that I'm being a bit generous because there were, I did quite for the stupid stupidity of it I did quite enjoy it and I think because it was an hour and 20 I, I got to enjoy it a bit more I think if it was longer in the way they filmed it this would have been a much lower score if they'd put in all the important scenes in that was missed, then maybe this would have actually got a bumped up score. But the script is what let this film down. It was purely the script. The acting didn't help with some of the male cast, especially Butch. Um, <laughs> but the script was a letdown in this film, in my opinion. But that is just my opinion. I would love to know what your opinion is. Have you seen this film yet? Are you going to watch this film? Let me know in the comments below um, I do respond to all the comments. Let's do start a conversation down there. If you did enjoy this video, please do hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, I do trade reactions, movie reviews, general movie talk, and of course that weekly movie news. If that does sound like your sort of thing, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be in the absolute world to me if you did. I am Mr. Scotty Pie. I hope you have a good day. I am out of here.